There's only one, the Weather Channel. The sun is now going down on a night that the Florida Panhandle and Big Bend will never forget. I'm Dave Belgum here in Apalachicola, where Hurricane Hermine is churning out there in the Gulf, making a beeline right for us. This is approximately the area where we believe it will make landfall in the wee hours of the morning. The bridges are shutting down. The ocean, as you can see, is sloshing through the dock and taking off some of the signs that are attached to this dock. There are signs out in the street that are whipping back and forth in danger of breaking off of their signposts and becoming very dangerous projectiles going down the street. There's also street flooding happening already here in Apalachicola. But as this storm turns and comes on shore, it's not gonna just affect the nearly 25 million people who, is, who are in its path, but it's also gonna affect not just Florida, but also Georgia and the entire east coast of the United States as it comes across Florida and Georgia and moves up. But as it comes through Florida, it's gonna hit not only the panhandle, but it's gonna hit the areas north of Tampa. And there is an area called Cedar Key where Sarah Rosario is standing by live for NBC News. Now, Sarah, that island that you're standing on isn't attached to the mainland. You have to actually get out there, right? Well, that's right. And right now, Dave, this island is getting slammed right now. And as conditions are deteriorating here in Cedar Key, this storm is gaining strength and that's what's causing it. And now the biggest concern right now for people that are in this area and other parts of the Gulf Coast, coast that aren't in the cone of the storm, the biggest concern is the storm surge and also the possibility of tornadoes. Meantime, many people just to the south of us are dealing with flooding and they're preparing for things to get much worse. With rough surf, gray skies, and empty beaches, residents living along Florida's Gulf Coast are bracing for Hurricane Hermine, barreling towards Florida's shoreline. This, uh, this hurricane is strengthening. We're going to see landfall about 2 a.m. Rex and Cindy Whiteman are ignoring the mandatory evacuation order for Apalachicola. We've done everything we can to prepare. Their town in Florida's Big Bend is at the center of the storm's cone. Gets rid of debris strap things down, move things inside. While they plan to ride it out, Floridians in 51 counties now in a state of emergency are making the same preparations, gathering sandbags to keep the water out. But in some parts of the Tampa Bay area, it wasn't enough. Pictures from the air show just some of the flooding. This storm hurricane is life threatening. Today, Florida Governor Rick Scott closed all state offices to give people more time to prepare. His message echoes that of forecasters warning of potential dangers, high winds, down trees and power lines, to name a few. The danger of life-threatening storm surge. This is a serious situation. And while some are already dealing with a mess to clean up, others are bearing down, prepared for what's to come. And for those people ignoring those mandatory evacuation orders, if they have to call 911, there will be no one out here to rescue them. Local officials say they're not going to be putting local responders in that type of danger to try to save people who aren't heeding those warnings. Reporting live in Cedar Key, Sarah Rosario. Alex, back to you. All right, Sarah, thank you so much. I want to get right over to our senior hurricane specialist, Brian Norcross. Brian, uh, some new information coming out from our recon flight, and of course, we're awaiting that newest advisory. Alex, we're standing by here any second for the uh, new advisory. Here is the 5 p.m. advisory.